Okay guys, got a new video here for you. Um, this is about mixed head stamps. And <clears throat> what you're looking at is on the left, on the far left, you've got a factory 6.8 SPC Hornady round. It is the Hornady black here. Okay, one tens. And to the uh, immediate right, you have two Hornady cases that have been resized. And you, I have other videos about what I'm doing with this Herret die, and I'm doing this AR Herret style case called the TAC 30 case. And <clears throat> uh, then to the uh, right of that are two S and B cases that I bought and fired as 6.8s, and then they've been resized as well. Now, I'm going to zoom you in, and I apologize if it's a little bit wobbly as I do it. All right, so what I want you to, or what I want to bring to your attention is that these Hornady cases have a slightly different color than these S and B cases. All right, I don't know if it's gonna show up particularly well on camera, but they have a bit more of a gold color, a little bit less, maybe bright. And then the uh, S and B cases are a little bit more bright. They're not necessarily shinier, They've all been fired, um, but the, the color of the brass is a little different. And what I had been reading was the s and brass is quite a bit harder than the Hornady brass. I like Hornady. I'm not trying to complain about it, but they have kind of a reputation of a little bit softer brass, and I can attest to that. I, I fired these pretty warm, and I fired these pretty warm, and there's a lot less pressure signs or uh, swipes, ejector hole features on the SMB than there is on the Hornady. Hornady much more beaten up. So I can tell it definitely is softer. <clears throat> but as far as the reloading part of this, I'm going to pick you up and bring you over to the, to the uh, reloading die because I wanted to show you what I found as I was trying to push the shoulder back. You can see the shoulders a bit lower on the TAC-30 cases than it is on the 6.8 case. So the shoulder has to be actually moved down. So let me bring you over there and show you what uh, what I found as I as I worked on this. So I'm gonna take, pick you up and zoom you out and pick you up. All right, <clears throat> when I did the Hornady, I found that the correct spot for my shoulder was and I explained it in the video, I went all the way down till I touched the shell holder and then I backed it out uh, until I was said the, the Pacific Endurochrome, so you can see the C, then the D, and the gap in the middle was like right facing toward me, basically in this, in this particular gap right here. All right, that worked for the Hornady and it's a softer, let me get you back in focus. Focus, babe, come on. There we go. It's a softer brass, and in the end, it took a little bit less resizing than the SMB brass. Now, in order to get the exact same shoulder position with the SMB, I ended up having to turn this down all the way until this R is pointing out. Okay, so that's how much further down I had to press, like. From there all the way to there all right to get the harder brass to take the shoulder how I want it now that made me realize the uh, the implications there are wow what if you're mixing head stamps and you're trying to do something kind of precision bumping a shoulder a couple thousands or um, creating a wildcat cartridge or just converting a case like from 30-06 to 8 millimeter Mauser or something like that. Uh, I can't tell you what's going to happen, but I can tell you that something could be different. And, and here is kind of the evidence because this location worked for the S&B brass. But if I, I'm here to tell you, if I ran a Hornady brass case into there, I think I'd, I'd move that shoulder way too far. And I'd have a lot of excessive head space when I went to fire that, um, fire that round. So, just.
just a something to be aware of. It's not really a word of warning, but just something to be aware of. All right.